Hey gang, one last song and then we'll get started. Hello. Hello. <laughs> that, the end of that song really snuck up on me. I forgot, I forgot that it ends sort of abruptly. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. It's a, bit, it's a little bit dark in here. There we go. That's a little bit better. Hi, guys. Welcome. Happy Sunday. How's it going? My kiddo is inside watching Matilda. The old Matilda, not the new Matilda. I would argue that the new Matilda, the musical Matilda, is both more confusing 
Because it's a musical, and so they don't explain as much because they, they have music to do. When are they supposed to explain the story? There's music that needs to happen, right? And also, um, Trunchbull is terrifying in the new one. <laughs> terrifying. Um, so, yeah, she was like, I want to watch old Matilda, like the first Matilda. Um, which in my mind I now call American Matilda because um, <laughs> obviously it didn't I, I, I wouldn't have known that it was weird that the first Matilda movie was all Americans yes and old Matilda has Danny DeVito who is also the narrator of the whole story and it's great it's so good um, so anyways uh, she woke up with like a cough and has been blowing her nose a lot and stuff so I made her some pastina, the little star pastas. I made her some pastina and sat her on the couch. And Sam this morning was like, all right, Clark, your job today, since you're obviously getting sick, is to just sit on the couch with a blankie and don't do anything else. <laughs> just sit on the couch and watch TV, okay? Just chill. And she was like, got it, and has done none of that. Absolutely. It's been a very fun morning, though. It's been really fun. But, like, trying to keep her from, like, going sicko mode, uh, it's been impossible this morning. So that's fine. That's fine. We did a lot of drawing. We played with dollies. We had a whole... It was a telenovela, dude. We had a whole storyline going where... Um, a, a mommy Barbie was uh, secretly a mermaid... And um, not all of the kids got to be mermaids. And there was a lot of drama. Um, and then the youngest kid somehow created a magical mirror and was able to teleport to a fantasy land. Hi, my love. <laughs> Speaking of. Hi, baby. What you doing here? You wanted to check on me. I'm doing just fine. Thank you. I wanted to see what your screen was. Oh, I'm just doing a little short thing, baby. I'm I'm just I'm just talking for a little bit. That's all. Okay, I hug you. <laughs> you wanna hug me? <laughs> okay. One sec, guys. I'll be right back. <laughs>
Okay. Hello, sorry about that. <laughs> Our first Clarky invasion. <laughs> Our first Clarky invasion in the new office. A rite of passage, I would say. <laughs> Anyways, starting over. Hello, everybody. <laughs> No, sorry, only kid hugs. I did get a big, big kid hug. She was like, I just want to hang out with you. I was like, that's so cool. I've been hanging out with you since 6 a.m. <laughs> so I'm going to work now. And uh, you're going to hang out with daddy, please. She's, she's so good at slipping away from him, dude. <laughs> Anywho, hi. How's it going? Now I'm hearing things. Hug breaks are mandatory. Yeah. Um, Sam's office is all done, I think. Uh, he worked really hard on it yesterday. The hiss is real. Would you like to expand on that? Is there an audio hiss? Electrics are all fixed. The server sounds. I can't do, I've done everything I can. As of right now, your mic picks up a hiss. Cool. That's more helpful. <laughs> it's barely audible. So for those of you who don't know, I am in a huge, nearly empty room. The reverb is insane. And I have a very, very loud server next to me. Um, so I have a bunch of filters on to help with that, but I can't get rid of all of it. Um, in the future, I will get rid of all of it, but I, I can't, <laughs> I can't do anything about it right now. So I appreciate your patience. Uh, you know, we're like a, a week into working here. Um, but I'm going to be swapping PCs and stuff and, and then we're going to try and figure out what to do about the server. Stupid, sexy server. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a big chonker boy because uh, we have business internet so that both Sam and I have as much internet as we need. And also my in-laws are able to run uh, their family business from here. We were all using a lot of internet, right? Um, so we have business internet, which means that we need a big old... A thick man in here <laughs> making a whole bunch of noise. And if you tell him to quiet down, he's like, without me, you couldn't even work. <laughs> I'll be as loud as I want. So. Hi, Summer. Yeah, it's working hard. It is working hard. Business internet? Business internet is very expensive, yes. But it's... Um, we feel worth it uh, because there's basically no non-business packages where we are that um, give us any upload at all. So if we want upload, we have to go biz, biz or bust. And if even if we can get like a normal package that has, you know, like five up, which is typically as, as high as it can get in like more rural areas. If Sam and I are both streaming at the same time, one of us suffers. One of us is in the trenches, you know. So anyway, yeah. So that's why if you hear anything weird in the background, just know I'm aware of it. I've, I've tried to fix things. Um, when we swap PCs, it'll, it'll be back to the better microphone. Um, 
we have a server cabinet on the way for that, et cetera. So hopefully things will slowly, sound, sound pollution will slowly get mitigated. Be sure that thing has enough cool air. Well, right now it's just buck naked. <laughs> Just out, just out in the breeze. So it's fine. Um, but yeah, the sort of stuff that we're looking at is specifically for servers. So side benefit the room won't need heating in the winter you know I was here not last night Friday night Friday night I was in here doing a sponsored thing right and it was actually chilly it was pretty chilly in here I was like I I kind of wish I had a blankie the weather's nice now it was very very hot we're supposed to have another sunny week but I don't think it's supposed to be I don't think it's supposed to be too hot. Uh, we've had a few days of like on and off rain and overcastness, which has been great. Um, so we've been we've been busy outside because it hasn't been miserable out, you know. So the piggies have been running around a bunch. The dogs have been out. The geese have been out, you know. Um, my sister in law is working on her house. It's been very it's been very active outside. But yeah. Does anyone remember the name of those blankets that you wear? Snuggies? Aren't they called Snuggies? <laughs> Oodies? Oodies are wearable blankets. Oh, yes. Yeah. They're just like giant blanket hoodies. Snuggie, the official blanket with sleeves. Yep, it's Snuggies. Oh my God. It's over the garden wall season. It's the time of year in which we should be watching that. And I was looking up because a non-zero number of times, a non-ten number of times even, People have asked me, has Clark seen over the garden wall yet? And I kept thinking to myself, if I recall correctly, over the garden wall is kind of unhinged and creepy all the time. <laughs> like it's comfy creepy, right? Um, but I was like, maybe I'm misremembering. I'll look up what age other people think you should be watching that. And everything is like, Kids should be minimum like seven, eight years old <laughs> to watch it. Um, definitely not a five-year-old. Five-year-old would be super creeped out by it. I was like, yeah, that's what I kind of figured. <laughs> I think the official American rating is seven minimum. Yeah, all of the like, like common sense media and stuff rates it at like eight and up. Um, Specifically, yeah, because there's like, there are explicitly creepy things that happen in it, but there's also just this general undertone through the whole thing of like, what's going on out there? <laughs> Why what's up there? So, uh, yeah. So I was like, I'm very excited to watch Over the Garden Wall. Again, I don't think that Sam has watched it before. So I'm planning on, we, fi we finally finished a uh, live action one piece. So I'm planning on pitching over the garden wall. <laughs> and now for the rest of one piece. Sam was saying that they've planned out like six seasons or something crazy. That's my child, 
Those are were quick little steps out there. Here she comes. Hi, where's your dad? <laughs> then you gotta go to daddy, baby, because I'm working. You're okay. I love you. <laughs> She's like, mommy, it was a scary bit of the movie. I was like, cool. There's another parent in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say, okay, as somebody that has read a few hundred chapters of the manga and watched, I don't know, a tenth of the anime probably, Wick Surf, welcome to the Cat Gang. Thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate it. Um, I will say there are a couple of things in live action One Piece that I think it was really well done, um, but a couple of things that are in it felt like giga spoilers for if you're if you're like reading the manga or uh, watching the anime and you're still like kind of in the beginning stages, there are a couple of things where I was like, why are they, why are they telling you this now? <laughs> why, why are they telling you this now? You don't know this this early. And I did not like that. <laughs> I didn't like that. Sam, uh, Sam has started watching the anime. He started watching the anime after we were like three episodes into the live action and has really been enjoying it. And there were a couple of things where he was like, I'm kind of pissed that I know that now because <laughs> I, I'm like 120 episodes in and I didn't know that. Like I'm way past this point in the story and I didn't know about this and I'm kind of mad that I know it now. So, um, so yeah, there are two things specifically uh, that... I don't know. I have to assume that they felt like it was a good call um, because of how they want to tell the story. But uh, I was I was really surprised that they introduced that stuff really early on. To be fair, One Piece kind of always did that, dropping terms or names with no context. That's not what's happening here. <laughs> This is like, here's a character. This is exactly who they are. They're extremely involved. And you're like, why? They weren't in the original story. <laughs> why is this person here? It's that sort of shit. Anyways, it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some stuff that, uh, again, with, a, with live action and they're, they're cutting out a lot of shit, right? <laughs> so they're smushing stuff all around in order to tell the story in a much more condensed way. I get it. But yeah. Can you give a spoiler finger example? I don't really want to, cause I don't want people to show up and like, while well, I'm mid spoiler, I don't know. Um, but I can, I can write it out in stream chat in the discord later if you want.
There's no way they're telling the whole story. Well, if you think about it, how many how many episodes of the anime? So so there's what eight episodes of the live action, and how many episodes of the anime did they fit into into the live action? No, 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 no. Listen to the whole question <laughs> before you start answering. Less than 20, probably. No, you're incorrect. <laughs> no, it's not 20. People were saying it was between like 60, 60 and 70, 80, something like that. Anyways, they fit. Oh, the point is because <laughs> people are like, there's no way they're going to be able to do the whole thing. They can. They're just going to have to shit all the filler out, which thank God, um, and condense stuff. One episode of plot and then 10 episodes of filler is the one piece way. <laughs> It's about 44 anime episodes to where they ended the live action. So that's, I mean, I think that's pretty good. That's going pretty well, you know. I'm not saying that, that they're going to be able to make the entire thing. But I'm saying if they needed to, they could do it. I don't get why filler is such a common thing with these types of anime. So there's two different ways that anime gets dropped, okay? So either it's an anime like One Piece, Naruto, etc., where they just keep making episodes. There isn't a plan for a season, right? And I think seasonal, I think at this point, everybody's realized like seasonal anime is the way to go. <laughs> but like um, the shows that just keep going, Hit, they hit walls sometimes or they realize like we need to pad because we're catching up too quick. Um, and so they just make shit up. And that's, that's why filler happens. <laughs> um, so uh, because of that and because of the blowback from from there being a lot of filler. I think at this point, a lot of studios have realized like people are willing to wait for a next season of a really good anime. They don't need the filler in order to come back and re-engage with it, right? Um, but we went through an era there where it was, I, don't, I feel like we just don't really get a lot of filler anymore, which is great. Um, but there was an era there <laughs> where there was just constant filler, um, or, uh, anime that was made before manga was over. And so they made up the ending, right? Soul Eater, original Fullmetal Alchemist, etc. And then people are like, why was that ending so weird? And then they go to read the manga and they're like, the manga isn't done yet. <laughs> there is no ending. I gotta read the manga for Soul Eater still. It's it's pretty it's pretty good. It's pretty all right. Yes, yeah. Game of Thrones, like Game of Thrones, trying to end before the books are out. That was a very anime move of them. <laughs> Yeah. 
Um, I'm very grateful that we got brotherhood. I think Full Metal Alchemist really deserved the brotherhood treatment. Uh, There are probably other shows that could use that, <laughs> but <laughs> Daenerys goes to the beach episode. I'd watch it. Ah, oh, everybody, you know what? This war, it's really taking a toll on us. Let's go to the hot springs. But they're split up by gender. Wackiness ensues. <laughs> A third attempt at Hunter Hunter. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot about Hunter Hunter. They tried. Yeah, Blue Exorcist also also did a, a rehash, huh? Oh my God. The second that kids go back to school, every single weekend is a birthday. <laughs> every week. Bro, I got a message this morning that was like, hi, on the 8th, we're doing a birthday. And I was like, fantastic. We'd love to come. I just got a message. Hey, on the 14th, we're doing a birthday. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's great. And then I know that it's last minute, but next weekend, we're doing a birthday. <laughs> Okay. We'd love to come. <laughs> I've never, I don't even know what Mushishi is about. I just know people love it. I have, I don't know anything about it. It's kind of like a Monster of the Week show, but it's lovely. I've seen this smoking man on things. Did we read this on MangaPod? The smoking man looks familiar. <laughs> we might have. We might have read it on Manga Pod and I just don't remember. Like an X-Files smoking man? I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's episodic, like the next generation. Nice. Nobody better be coming up those stairs. I'm gonna lock my door tomorrow. I'm just kidding, my kid will be at school. <laughs> I might lock it anyway though. What if she flies? What if she figures out how to fly? Okay, for Sam or the geese. I like Sam though. I also like the geese. If the geese, bro, if the geese came up the stairs, that would be amazing. I'd be like, come in girls. <laughs> I don't care if you shit everywhere, that's fine. I found out that pigs can eat bread 
I don't know why that's so alarming to me. That's a very surprising thing to find out. Um, yeah. When you look it up, it's like, yeah, pigs can eat bread. It's like no big. Um, I thought pigs could eat anything. They can't eat anything. I think things like tomatoes are bad for them. Um, but yeah, I was talking about it with my mother-in-law and she was like, yeah, uh, my sister-in-law used to, well, is like working in animal husbandry. And she was like, yeah, we went to visit a place where any like bread scraps, they feed the pigs. And so we were looking it up and we were like, apparently pigs can eat bread and we're making our own bread again. So I was like, this is great news <laughs> because man, do I hate when there's just like, if my kid is like, I want toast and then eats half of it. And is like, actually, I hate this toast. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is like it's it's like a it's like a processed and baked situation, you know? So, um I'm just surprised. I'm surprised that they can eat it and be fine. When I worked as a baker, we had a farmer that would buy the broken ugly pretzels to feed his pigs. That's very cute. I thought pigs could eat like dead bodies. Yeah, again, there's a difference between like a dead animal slash human <laughs> and a, a baked glutinous mass with processed grains in it and stuff. Don't give them apples. It's too late, dude. We have like 10 apple trees. We feed them apples every day. <laughs> Seagulls thrive off of chips. Kings of the sea. <laughs> Anyways. You know, we're all just out here trying to figure out what food scraps we can feed which animals. <laughs> this might be really weird. I just had a massive nostalgia tour past creators that I used to follow. The scene isn't really part of my life anymore, but I noticed that you were live and I wanted to mention I have huge respect for your career, the crews you worked with, and your body of work. Big cheers from an old fan. Keep it up, Dukes. Crizzo, thank you so much. What a sweet message. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for saying hi. Um, some of the apples are sweet, yeah. But the, the trees that produce sweet apples are not producing very many of them. Most of them are sour apples, which is fine. So we can make, you know, pie filling and stuff with those. But apples, apples for just like picking and eating. We don't have many of those. They are they are rare, rare babies. I wanted to get my bookshelf in here this weekend and, 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 and it didn't happen. That's okay. It wound up being sort of a mess. <laughs> but we did a movie night last night um, and everybody came over and had hot dogs and we watched Snow White 
Um, Clarky wanted to watch Snow White because she had never seen it before. And we got like, I don't know, three quarters of the way through. And she was like, I'm falling asleep, dude. Can we watch the rest later? We were like, sure. So we paused it and everybody said bye and went home. And she was like, great. So tomorrow when everybody comes back over and we watch the rest of Snow White, <laughs> Sam and I were like, not tomorrow, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, we're not having everybody over two nights in a row. I'm so sorry. Can I see your bracelet? This one? I've had it since I was little, since I was like six. It's cute. It's all wood. And then this one, my sister got me. It's two like stars interconnected. It's very cute. Yeah, is the new Adventure Time good? I always loved the Fiona and Cake episodes. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to watch it. It's definitely more mature. That's good to know. <laughs> I've thought about rewatching Adventure Time so many times. Um, oily Timmy time. Not right now. It's Sunday. I'm binging Adventure Time plot episodes. I found a watch guide. Can you link me to the watch guide, Summer? Yeah, Sam tried watching Adventure Time a long time ago and it didn't really, it didn't really grab him, which does not surprise me. There are some shows where I'm like, this is a Sam show, I think he'll really like this. And there are other times where I'm like, Sam's not gonna give a fuck about this show. <laughs> Timmy's day. It's Timmy's day off, dude. <laughs> Let him rest. I never finished Adventure Time. I didn't know it ended. It did. It did end, yeah. Adventure Time starts rough. I wouldn't say it starts rough, but like much like Gravity Falls, Adventure Time doesn't have a clear direction at first. I think tonally... It, it was still very good and very fun. Um, and and it, it maintained tone, right? Gravity Falls is the same where people are like, oh my God, you have to watch Gravity Falls. It's like so good. You know, there's, there's all of this like amazing stuff going on with it. And you watch the first season of Gravity Falls and you're like, so it's a, it's a procedural like kids supernatural show okay, yeah, that's fine, you know? <laughs> but again, like, even if... I'm trying to think of how to put this. Episodes that that are really strong in a show like Adventure Time, I think are strong because of your already existing like perceptions of characters and things, you know? So showing and being like, this is such a good Adventure Time episode. Just watch this one and it'll sell you on the whole thing. You know, sometimes those episodes don't hit 
because they don't have the same context or care about the characters in the same way, you know? My motivation to watch Gravity Falls was to find out why Tumblr loves the triangle guy. I respect that. <laughs> I respect that so much. <laughs> I watched Bee and Puppy Cat when they first tried to make it. I haven't watched it since it's like actually had a consistent show. Yeah, we've got Sunforge tonight. Very excited. Yeah, I was a Kickstarter supporter, but it got so delayed so many times that I got burnt out. I was also a Kickstarter supporter, and I kept trying to follow shit and was like, what's happening with this now? I get it. It's hard to get a show going, you know, but um, yeah. When I started seeing clips from it, I was like, wait, is it, is it actually happening now? <laughs> I did not expect the last Sunforged episode. No spoils. Thank you for the no spoils. Yeah, Sunforged, Sunforged is going good. I had such a hard time concentrating last session, which was really unfortunate because the cats were absolutely feral. They would not leave me alone. They were so distracting. And there were multiple times last session where I was like, I have, I don't, I have no idea what's going on, <laughs> which, is, which sucks, which sucks so bad. I was talking with Sam about it later. I was like, there, I was having such a hard time. I was having such a hard time last session, dude, but uh, tonight should be different. I remember Brie was eyeballing your cat. Yeah, she kept messaging me like, this cat aggro, dude. Yeah, it's fine. Look, if, again, no spoilers, but if you're watching Sunforged, I think that you'll agree that, like, Joe is trying to juggle so many things in these first episodes like he he really worked hard to like create a a big start to this whole thing and there's so much going on um that like i don't blame him for not extending me uh, like <laughs> reaching a hand out to help me because he's already trying to do so much shit. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to roll with it, you know? The first episode was so information dense. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, it's very good so far. Um, if uh, you're into sort of like a bloodborne -y vibe, um, if you want to, you know, watch kind of like a dark high fantasy sort of thing, that's what Sunforged is. And our friend Joe Fudge is DMing it. Um, and it's great. It's a good group. Uh, I love all the characters again, don't spoil stuff if you are watching it. Uh, but that'll be on Joe Fudge's channel tonight. Apparently there's a bunch of D and D shit happening tonight. So we're trying to start like right at eight 30 tonight. So, um, yeah. I just noticed I got a gifted sub. It happened when I fell asleep with the thief stream. Thanks, Arnar. Oh. 
eight thirty is going to be the time then. Yeah. I was talking about it with Joe and he was saying that he does want to aim for eight thirty. Um, like going forward, unless there's a reason to swap it to nine originally and during God forged, it was sort of like an understanding that there was a possibility that we wouldn't be able to show up until nine because Clark's sleeping was so all over the place. Um, but she's been pretty consistent now. She's normally knocked out by eight o'clock. So, um, so yeah, I was like, I can make eight thirty. That's fine. We can do that. The more I watch Tomato and Games, the more I appreciate his utterly ordered chaos abilities. I would love to know, because he's said before that he has, like, notes uh, to help him, like, in combat situations. I would love to know what those notes look like. <laughs> because I don't know how anybody keeps that shit in order. Like, when he was playing Word, he had so much shit going on as a wizard. No, thank you. <laughs> I could not. I've heard good things about flowcharts. I use a flowchart for Dash, and it's very helpful. And I've thought that I should use a flowchart um, for Sunforged as well. Because it is so, it's so useful to just have a thing that's like, what can I do with my action? What can I do with my bonus action? What are, like, efficient, like, series of events that I can do, Right. <clears throat> there are only two episodes of Sunforge so far, yeah. So it's um I don't know. Maybe maybe eight hours so far to watch, which I know is a lot, um, but it's really good. I'm amazed by how many characters and games you have going and keeping track of them all. They're all very distinct. You know, I'm not playing any characters that are similar to each other. Dash is a paladin. So like, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to effectively use a paladin. Um, and not really a spoiler, but I'm, I'm playing a bard this time. Uh, I've never played a bard before. So I'm trying to, uh, Figure out how to be effective with that. Um, because, you know, it's it's easy enough to say, like, yeah, well, you know, I'll just have, like, a bunch of utility stuff. But if you can't figure out how to cleverly use utility stuff, it just kind of dies on the vine in your spell list, you know? So I'm trying I'm trying to like think of or be more, you know, out of the box ish with my spells and how I'm using them. Mm, I'm out of water. Is there a Godforge summary or episode recap? Every, like, what, 20 episodes or so, Joe did a, a recap. Um, so there are a bunch of recap episodes that sort of, like, take you step-by-step step through what's gone on in Godforge. To be clear, you do not need to have watched Godforge to watch Sunforge. They have barely anything to do with each other. Completely different characters, totally different um, continent. Uh, basically, everything is different, there are small ways in which what happened in Godforged might affect Sunforge, but it will never be in a way where it's like you're missing something if you didn't watch Godforged. Does that make sense? So. I'm a bard. Bards are spellcasters, and paladins are spellcasters. <laughs> but you wouldn't know it watching Dash. 
I mostly just use it for my shield. Because I built him to take hits. And that's all he's supposed to do. That's all he's made to do is stand in the way and get hit. <laughs> And then he gets yelled at. And then he gets yelled at by everybody for standing in the way and getting hit. But that's literally my job. <laughs> that's what I'm supposed to do. No get hit. Like Summer. <laughs> A bloop. Will you play the Bluey game when it comes out? Definitely. I sent, I sent Sam the trailer for it. <laughs> I sent Sam the trailer for the Bluey game. Um, I also uh, was looking at the like Lord of the Rings Shire game. Good vibes, good vibes. I'll definitely get it for my kiddo. It's so cute. It looks super cute, yeah. <clears throat> you just got to stand there and not get hit. That's, I mean, that's what I try. I, my AC is pretty high, you know? I think with everything on, it's what, 23? 23 or 24? It's pretty hard to hit me, you know? Are bards normally that? It's not the bard. This is my paladin is who I'm talking about. <clears throat> and yes, paladins can be very tanky. To be fair, it's totally in line for a paladin to be this. Someone's got to get hit. It might as well be me person. You need one. You need a tank, you know. What level are y'all in deadbeats? Uh, Summer, we're level nine, right? Summer will remember better than me. I think we're level nine, though. Yeast. Yeast. Summer plays a necromancer, which is very fun. <laughs> I'm playing a paladin in Baldur's Gate 3, and I keep running out of spell slots. Yeah, their paladins are weird. Paladins are very weird to try and play. I'm trying in vain to catch up with deadbeats. How far along are you, Bromanity? Running out of smite slots, dude. I, <laughs> I'm. I, it's not as bad as a warlock, obviously, but um, yeah. It's hard because so many things are concentration. This is, I complain about this all the time. All the things that I want to use to like be helpful are concentration, and my shield is concentration. So if I turn my shield on, then it's like, okay, I can't do any of those other things. I have enough spell slots now that I should be smiting, and I almost never do. Um, because at the start, I was running out of slots all the time, because if I lost concentration, I would have to cast my shield again. I'm still procrastinating putting the new item in my spreadsheet. I don't blame you. It took Brett so long to explain that item to you. It sounds like a nightmare. Hmm. <clears throat> 
I just gotta haste the boy more. Yeah, give me haste. Drug me up, baby. Everyone knows paladin spell slots are just for smite. I know, and it's I. I never, I never use it really. Got to fish for the crits. I know. That's <laughs> that's the other thing is I keep being told like, don't worry about it. Just smite on a crit. But I never, I never hit. I never get critical hits ever. <laughs> <sighs> yeah we had we also had the deck of many things in a campaign i'll say and somebody who pulled the level up card in this campaign um I don't think anybody was salty about it really though. We would just constantly have to remember like, oh right, you're a level ahead of us. That must be so nice for you. Need to set up a combo, have someone cast hold person on a target, and you can auto crit them into oblivion. <clears throat> no salt, just a dry rub, yeah. It doesn't feel like Sunday to me. I keep thinking it's Saturday, and then I'm like, but I'm streaming. So it's not Saturday. It's definitely Sunday. Um, I got sent a, uh, a cute little box with, like, stickers and stuff for Rune Factory 3, which was adorable. And... Um, uh, I gave the stickers to Clark, because I always do. I always give the stickers to Clark. And she put uh, all but one of the stickers on a piece of paper and then one sticker on another one. And she was like, all right, mommy, we're going to do a drawing challenge. I was like, okay, cool. Sounds good. What's the drawing challenge? And she was like, all right, I'm going to have this paper. And it was the one with one sticker. And she was like, and you're going to have this paper. And it was the one with all of the rest, with seven, seven more stickers, right? And they're all of the characters, the full body art of the characters. She was like, we have half an hour to draw what's on our paper. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're going to draw one character and I have to draw seven? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> okay. I got two characters in and was like, I'm taking a break. And Clark was like, me too. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she came over and she was like mommy this is looking so good I said thank you and she goes but I'm a little concerned because you didn't leave enough room for this character and where are the other characters that are on top gonna go I don't think that you made them small enough and I was like don't <laughs> don't do this don't do this just stop at mommy it's looking great <laughs> Is she an art teacher? Basically, yeah. I sent a, I sent a video to Gerard, the completionist, because he's in England right now, and we were trying to figure out if there was a way that we could see each other. Um, 
and he was asking me some questions about Clark and he was like, oh my gosh, what is her accent like now? Like I haven't heard her talk in forever. And I was like, oh, let me send you a video. And it was a video that I took of, um, it was supposed to be, she didn't know I was filming. It was supposed to just be like a cute video of her walking to our gate to go to school. And I was going to send it to my mom. Just like nice, nice, chill morning. Clark, he's going to school, right? Clark starts walking and then suddenly stops, turns around and is like, it's very dangerous if a car hits you. I was like, <laughs> it is. Yeah. And she's like, because cars have electricity. And if a car hits you, the electricity from the car could zap through the whole car and into your body and you could die. And then she turned around and started walking toward the gate. And I was like, yeah, that does sound scary. <laughs> so I sent that to Gerard and he was like, what is she, a horseman of the apocalypse? What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the impact, totally fine. Uh, no one dies from impact, guys. But the electricity, you gotta be careful of that shit. <laughs> Just a good omen's character. <laughs> yeah, basically. Ari Wolf, welcome to the Cat Gang. Thank you so much for subscribing. We've had a few new subscribers today. Thank you. I see I came in at a great time. Yeah, I'm just talking about my kid. Just saying some weird shit on video. I love the wall color. Thank you. It's called Peach Posey. People keep asking. So when we did a stream in here at night, it looked pumpkin orange, like autumnal in here, which I'm not mad about. So it's pretty during the day and it is um, unsettling at night. And I like that. Right on season, exactly. It's perfect. No, never mind. I was trying to, because I have these, like, I have, like, these. And I was going to be like, yeah, it's, like, this, this, or this, this. <laughs> then I mentally gave up before picking it up. I bet this room feels cozy. It doesn't, like, I think this color is very cozy. I think we're on the right track. I think we're getting there. Um, the rest of this room is pretty, like, empty. We keep putting stuff in here, hoping that it'll help with the, with the sound. Pretty nails. Thank you. I haven't had acrylics in about five years. Since I had a child, I don't think. Um, because, d d fuck that, with a baby, absolutely not. If, if you... Dude, if you take the time to get your nails done when you have a newborn, you are so powerful. Like, <laughs> could not be me. Um, but yeah, I, I just like on a lark decided I wanted to get my nails done. And currently I love them. In a week I might hate them, we'll see. Where's the dope bookshelf? I, I had literally just said that, yeah, there's a, our bookshelf is going back there. I have to take it apart in order to get it in here, so. <laughs> you need one of those electric fireplaces. Oh my gosh, one of those like fake, along with my fake fridge, we can have a fake wood burner. Sam and I went to get food the other day um, and we were next to a wood burner 
And Sam was like, it must be really nice here. Like in this spot, this must be like the best spot to be in um, when it's winter time. And I turned around and I was like, it might be. I'm pretty sure that's fake though. And he was like, no, it's probably just electric, but, but it, the stuff through the window looks fake. And we had like a whole debate. <laughs> we had a whole debate about whether or not <laughs> this wood burner was real. <laughs> we could have just asked somebody, but that would have ruined it, you know? A fake fridge, but a real one behind that. <gasps> How did you know what I was going to do? I tried to do the thing. So I keep stumbling onto uh, videos about like grooming and clipping nails and whatever of like cats and dogs. And a lot of people, if they have a cat that that tends to get stressed out with the like nail clipping process. They'll, they'll get, get those little slidey packs of like pate basically, and just let them sit and lick it while their nails are getting done. So that it's like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait for this. Cause I get to eat all this pate while they're doing my nails. Right. We tried to do that. We tried to do that yesterday. Cause Watson is fine. I can literally just, Clip, 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 clip. And she doesn't give a shit. And then when she's done, she's like, oh, are we done? Bye, you know? <laughs> um, but Sherlock hates it. So I was like, we're gonna, let's give him a snack do Let's give him a snack do while, while we're clipping him. So I had him wrapped up in the blankie so that he was basically in a little straight jacket. <laughs> and, then, and then Sam brought a snack for him and he freaked out. I think because... He didn't want to be fed the treat. He wanted to like get the treat. Does that make sense? So we were trying to like give it to him and he was desperately trying to get out so that he could get the treat. And we were like, I'm, it, we ha it's right here. <laughs> it was such a mess. Yeah, I, I have to like swaddle him basically. So I like grab him. I, I grab a blanket like this and then I wrap it around him and I have him like this and then I pull out one paw at a time. Sorry. But, um, no, he freaked. He, he like, he fought so hard that I just let him go. I was like, I guess we'll try this later. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, maybe it would be different if I had Sherlock from Kittendom, but I didn't. Watson, I've been, you know, touch, touching her little peats and doing her nails since she was, what, like six weeks old, right? So she doesn't care. But Sherlock was over a year old when I got him. So he, <laughs> he doesn't like when you touch his paws and he doesn't like when you clip them. He hates it. But she doesn't he he doesn't have teeth, so he can't pull the nail caps off. Um, which is something that cats need to be able to do. They have to be able to like get the the nail caps off, right? So um scratch pads, all those sorts of things, they can help, but sometimes they need to like pull it off basically, or get it clipped. <laughs> My family have tried to cut our dog's nails. She wants nothing to do with it. She freaks out so much that it becomes dangerous to try. Yeah, there's a video, again, I, for some reason, keep getting fed, like, grooming videos. Um, but there is a video where somebody was talking about th they spent, like, two months acclimating their dog to the idea of getting their nails done. Um, so, like they would just bring out, they have, you do, use a Dremel for it. So they would just bring out the Dremel and let the dog just interact with the Dremel. And then it turned into like 
touching the Dremel to the dog's paws, but not turning it on. So just like just touching it sometimes, you know, and whenever the Dremel would touch, giving the dog a treat um, and just doing that over and over and over again for a while and then turning the Dremel on near the paw, but not actually touching the paw. And again, like feeding the dog every time the Dremel turned on. And then eventually combining all of those things together, <laughs> you know. I'm desensitizing my puppy right now and it's a process yeah I have a Sheltie I turn her onto her back make her comfy give her belly rubs after every nail cut yeah yeah Watson I literally yeah I flip her under her back on my chest like this and I have my knees up to like hold her little feeties up and then I clip like one or two nails and then I give her some kisses and scritches and then clip a couple more nails and scritch and a couple more nails and she'll just <laughs> she's just a Sarah she doesn't give a shit Getting them used to having their teeth brushed is also challenging. Yeah. Um, I, I was never introduced to the idea of like needing to brush my pet's teeth. I really wish that literally anyone had said to me like, Hey, sometimes cats need their, t their teeth brushed. Um, because like, Sherlock also had like inflammatory issues and that's why they all like rotted, but Sherlock had to have all of his teeth taken out and potentially we could have like mitigated some of that if I had known that like he was just in need of more dental care, you know, but I don't know. You could be, you could be really cynical about it and say like, well, of course a vet didn't say that to you because they're hoping that they'll get to take a bunch of teeth out. Um, how do you brush an unwilling cat's teeth? Uh, they make, they basically make like cat toothpaste that just is like pate and you can get little things that they like, aren't like chew on with the stuff on it to like, and it'll brush their teeth basically. Yeah, we need to start shaving down the, the pig hooves. We haven't attempted that yet. <laughs> but we need, that's a, we need them getting used to that early, you know? Yeah, I mean, all I know is that, uh, all of Sherlock's teeth had to come out and a ton of Watson's teeth had to come out. And Watson has, has nothing wrong with her whatsoever. Her teeth just started rotting. So, and they were like, yeah, cats, you know, cats teeth just, this happens to most cats. But I now know that a lot of people brush their cat's teeth so that that doesn't happen, you know? You guys got the pigs? Yeah, we have two pigs, Clementine and Winifred, and they're very cute. We love them. We have Clementine and Winifred, the piggies, and we have geese named Apple and Crumble. We have two tortoises that are my sister-in-laws. Um, but they live on the property with us because our sister-in-law lives on the property. We have lots of animals. There's so many. Mm -hmm. 
a Sam, my husband. I don't know who added Sam to the animal list, but... Any plans for new chickens in the spring? I might wait until spring, yeah. But I was saying there's a, there's a specific type of chicken um, that I'm really curious about. They're like, I can't remember what they're called, but they're really good layers and they're also very, very social, um, which would be good because we have seven kids over here sometimes, like depending on whether or not there's an influx of cousins. Um, and they all want to interact with the animals a lot. And if we had, uh, you know, a breed of chicken that is typically more like into people, it would probably be less stressful for them. Is it a large breed? I think it's just, I think it's the same size as our last chickens were. I don't know. Yeah, his office is all set up. I don't know if he posted pictures. I know he took pictures last night, but yeah, he's ready to go. I don't remember what the breed is, guys. heard my child outside but talking to someone else so I assume she's hanging out with Sam outside and they're not Orpingtons and they're not Silkies no Orpingtons always remind me of there's a book that um, Telly got us the first time that I hung out with Telly um, she brought a book called Nanny Fox and the book it's about a fox that loves chickens um, not to eat, just as friends. And uh, a chicken on a farm nearby is looking for a nanny. And, and uh, this fox goes to her and is like, hi, I'll be the nanny. And she was like, absolutely fucking lutely not, you won't. <laughs> but in the end, she's so desperate for someone to help out with these chickens that she's like, fine. But you better watch yourself basically. And, um, the mom is called Mrs. Buff Orpington. That's very cute. It's actually like, um, in the book, he's basically like, yeah, you know, he's got like a brother and a sister and his parents and they all, you know, go out. It's there's like a kind of a dark aspect to this book where like they're all going out to like steal chickens to eat. And um, this kid, Fox, that loves chickens, like, refuses to eat them, but still has to, like, come for the hunt. And he gets upset every time. And when he gets offered this nanny job, he's so happy. He, like, immediately moves out of his house and is like, I have to live at the farm for my new job. And they're like, what's your job? And he's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> and he, like, moves to the farm and becomes friends with all the farm animals and takes care of the chickens and then at the spoilers at the end of the book, his brother and sister are sent out to hunt on their own for the first time. And they try to, they try to take Mrs. Buff Orpington and he has to fight off his siblings and he does. And that's, and that's the end of the book. He fights them off. And Mrs. Buff Orpington is like, 
you saved me. And he's like, yeah, because I love chickens. And you're like, oh, my gosh. He really was like, my family's toxic. <laughs> my family's toxic. I'm out. That's intense. I know, for real. Like, literally, the story is is him, like, I, I don't align with what my parents are doing. They don't understand me. I'm moving away. I'm putting distance between us. And that distance stays. At the end of the book, he's like, yep, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with you guys. I'm going to keep hanging out with the chickens. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> That's pretty intense. It doesn't, I, I should specify when you're reading the book, it doesn't come across dark. It feels dark to me as an adult because I think about these things, right? <laughs> like, dang, this is actually a book about like getting away from a toxic family and like finding, you know, and like pursuing being yourself and feeling comfortable and like, <laughs> that's what this book's really about, you know, but not for Clark. For Clark, it's just about a cute fox that likes chickens. It's called Nanny Fox. Um, and Telly's kids really liked the book, and so Telly got me a copy of the book and gave it to me for Clark, and she loves it. Yeah, we were, so like I said, we did movie night last night and we were watching Snow White and Sam and I were talking about how we hadn't watched that movie since we were kids. And the whole sequence that happens after, so the huntsman like goes to kill Snow White, right? And then he's like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And he's like, run, run away into the woods. And then we have, <laughs> and then we have that scene that has at this point now been like gift to death because it's so funny of Snow White like, oh, 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 oh. And then she like runs off into the woods. It takes her forever to just like work up. <laughs> like she needed to like rev the engine a little bit before she could run off into the woods, right? But like when she's in the woods, I remember vividly as a kid thinking that in the woods there were tons of monsters. And as an adult watching it, I'm like, oh, there aren't monsters in the woods. The whole point is that she's so terrified about like what's going on right now that she's sort of imagining danger where there isn't any. So it's all like trees turning into scary things, but it's just a tree, right? Like it's a lot of that. She like falls into some water and there are logs that she thinks are crocodiles, but they're just logs that didn't. I didn't register that as a kid. I was like, oh my God, this, this, these woods are terrifying, right? But, but they're, it's just a totally normal, just totally normal woods. She's just so scared. It's, try, it's supposed to like give you an idea of how panicked she is running off into the woods, right? And I'm like, I did not pick up on that as a kid. And Sam was like, me neither. <laughs> so... scared or drugs we're not talking about alice in wonderland yeah she got told that her her stepmother wanted to murder her and to run off into the woods to protect herself and then she was like hold on i'm gonna do a line and then and then i'll get going oscar worthy <laughs> Wait, can I find it? I need to find it. Hold on. <laughs> Snow White running through the woods, running away. Snow White running away. This has got to be it. Wait. <laughs> Is it this? <laughs> Is this it? 
No, hold on. Yes. <laughs> yes, hold on. Oh my God, hold on, wait. This is so good. <laughs> Veggie Tales being an iconic masterpiece for five minutes. That's a two million viewed video. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Uh, Snow White runs away into the dark forest. Fantastic. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ready? Wait, are you going to be able to hear it? Hold on. Okay, are you ready? Run away. I in the woods anywhere. Watch her. Come back. I'll go. Go. She was in a scary situation, okay? I get there I get it. It took her a minute to decide what to do, to process. But holy shit, that's funny. <laughs> oh. Do you know where Quacky's makeup is? Oh. She's running for her life and you're laughing. I am, yes. I won't apologize. <laughs> did you laugh about it during the movie too? Yes, I did. All of the adults laughed. And then my sister, <laughs> all, literally four adults on the couch, out loud laughing <laughs> at that scene. Poor Clark. And then... <laughs> sister-in-law looked at me and was like, you guys know this isn't a comedy, right? <laughs> did the kids go, man, adults are mean? It was just my child, and we did not exist to her. She was fully just watching the movie. She didn't care. <laughs> There are a lot more musical numbers in Snow White than I remember as well. I, I didn't remember a lot of songs in that. <clears throat> in the mines where a million diamonds shine. Yeah, and then there's the whole the whole song that they that they sing after Oh my god, there's the the taking a bath for the first time song. 
Snow White tells them all off for going to eat dinner when they haven't washed. And they go outside and they're like, courage, men. Courage. <laughs> they, all, they all wash themselves and Grumpy's like, disgusting. <laughs> Uh, so that's a, that's a whole musical number that I did not remember. And then they eat their food, and they all they all start playing music and dancing, and they do a. Isn't this a silly song for anyone to sing? That that one they do that. There's a whole there's so many songs in that. That's how it feels to take a shower sometimes, for real. There's a really cute show, by the way, that we watched today for the first time called Ready, Eddie, Go. It's very cute. It's, um, it's a show that like takes you through every step of the process of like doing like kind of a normal daily or, or even like monthly thing maybe. <clears throat> so it'll be like, Eddie, it's bath day. We gotta, we gotta take a bath today. So what are all the steps to taking a bath? And like, it goes through like every step. Um, it's hard to explain. But it's kind of like a kid version of, you know, like how there are people on TikTok now that are like, hey, not everybody got taught how to do this. So I'm going to take you through like how to do, like maybe you've never pumped your own gas before, right? If no one's ever taught you how to pump your own gas, I'm going to show you like what the process is to pump your own gas and how to pay for it and all that sort of shit. Um, it's like that, but for little kids. So it'll be like, okay, this next part of the dentist process can sometimes be loud. You can bring ear protectors if you'd like, if you can't deal with loud noises very well. Or like sometimes, you know, uh, again, in the dentist episode, they were talking about the tools and they were like, sometimes the tools feel kind of weird in your mouth and, you know, but it goes by pretty quick and like, it just takes you through like the whole stuff. And it was just very cute. <clears throat> bath day, not bath time. Uh, are, are you saying like the difference between taking a bath every day or not? We don't, we don't bathe every day in our house because it's not good for your hair or your skin. I totally respect that for some people it's like, it's a no go. Like you have to bathe every day. That's totally fine. We, we don't. <clears throat> but you know, I have friends like Jesse that bathe twice a day. Like I'm not, I'm not about to tell anybody how often they should bathe. I just had to get some dental work and I have to go back on Tuesday. Did not <laughs> enjoy the thought. Yeah, I need to go get my teeth checked. I haven't had my teeth checked since I moved here. Yeah, yeah. Or like, some people just work dirty jobs. <laughs> you know? Some people just work dirty jobs, dude. My four-year-old brought a stick bug into the house. How cool. My daughter brought a snail in the other day. And I was like, nice, very neat. <laughs> I don't know where we're going to put that boy, but he's beautiful. We found a possum last night, hopefully not in your house. <laughs> Q 
keep reaching for my water, but it's empty. I just imagine a possum in a baby crib. That would be the worst <laughs> to come home and be like, who's in the crib? I have my baby right here. <laughs> a wild animal. That's neat. <clears throat> My child has a druid, no big. Potentially, yeah. I keep saying that Clark's a necromancer. She has yet to prove me wrong. She's now, oh my gosh, our current hurdle is um, we accidentally, normally we drain, if, if she's taking a bath, we drain the bath water like right as she's getting out. And for some reason we didn't and it got left there. And in the morning there were like three, because of the time of year, there were like three dead bugs in the bath. And now Clark is like, I don't ever want to take a bath again because bugs die in the bath. <laughs> and I'm like, counter idea. We just make sure we drain the water and then bugs won't drown in the water. First the crane fly and now this, she still brings up the crane fly. The crane fly comes up all the time and then it was like, oh my God, there's a dead spider in the bath and a fly. And she was like so upset that they were dead. <sighs> so many changes since last time I saw a stream. How long ago did you see a stream? Yeah, and because We've had so many times that she's like found a bug that is obviously dead and somehow it turns out it's not dead actually. It's perfectly alive, which is why we joke that she's a necromancer because that's happened enough times now. If there's, a, if there's like a drowned bug, a squished bug, anything, she will lovingly pick it up and put it on the counter so that hopefully it'll feel better <laughs> which is so sweet, but I'm I like, <laughs> I try to be honest with her. Like, I really think this one's dead, honey, you know? And I'm glad that she loves bugs like that. I think that's great. It's great that she's so like sweet with them, but bugs die all the time, you know, they're everywhere. My child does that also. She'll say, hey, bud, what's wrong to all the bugs, even when squished? Yes. Clark will be like, oh, look at the little guy. Like every time. <laughs> I think the last time I saw a stream was around when y'all had Clark. Yeah, five years ago then. Yeah, because Clark's almost five and a half. She can only cast Revivify so many times a day. I know. She doesn't know how to manage spell slots and things yet, though. Yeah. Yeah, she's getting big. She's in her second year of school because kids start school here at four, which is wild. 
Um, and she already hates it. She hates school. She's been back for what, two weeks? And is like, is it the weekend yet? Every single day. <laughs> like, geez. I didn't expect you to hate school this quickly. Relatable, I know, right? <clears throat> yeah, so there's that. <laughs> I remember watching a lot of your YouTube content back before she was born. That really doesn't feel like six years ago. Yeah, it's a while. It's been a while. It's crazy, right? Weekend almost over. Yeah, weekend almost over. Yeah, it sucks when she wakes up on a Monday and is like, ah, more weekend. And you're like, <laughs> incorrect, wrong. I know, it's very cute. Need to make the butternut squash chili thing. I made a chili yesterday and I'm, I'm, I did it in the slow cooker and I really fucked up because um, when I do it in the instant pot or in like a pressure cooker, uh, it gets hot enough that like when, when it comes down from steam when you open it. It's basically boiling in there, right? And then I add lentils. And while it's like cooling down, while it's coming down from boil, um, I just leave the lentils in there to cook, right? Uh, while it's like getting rid of some of that extra liquid and thickening up a little bit. And then the lentils take on, etc. cetera, right? <clears throat> I, I did the same thing, but in the slow cooker, not thinking about the fact that it just doesn't get as hot in the slow cooker. And so when it was time to eat, fortunately the chili was just a side thing, but when it was time to eat, I went to take a bite and I was like, oh no, <laughs> the lentils, the lentils are still a little crunchy. And then it was like a sitcom. Sam looked at me and was like, what do you mean? And I looked down and he had already covered both of his hot dogs in chili. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> All right. He, yeah, he still ate all of them. And then we were out of uh, hot dog buns. And so my man, my innovator, he took a, he took a bread roll and hollowed it out and put, th <laughs> and put three hot dogs inside. <laughs> and was, <laughs> just walked into the room and went, I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> it's amazing. I was like, what the? What have you done? <laughs> I don't know why I can't cook lentils correctly. Um, do they tend to split? If they, if when you're trying to cook lentils, they tend to like explode basically, like they don't keep their shape, it's because it's too hot. <clears throat> you, shouldn't, you shouldn't boil lentils. I, I mess up lentils all the time because it's too hot. So you can like bring it up to boil and then, and then turn it down to like a low perk. And that's, that's where lentils can really shine. Cause if, if you, if it's too rapid, um, yeah, they just burst and they turn into mush basically. Also, we only have English mustard in the house right now. And my sister-in-law <laughs> came in with her hot dog and was like, I almost died. I almost died just then. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? She said, I didn't read the label. I didn't know. Mm. 
what's English mustard like? It's like hot mustard. If you've had hot mustard, it's like, it's like back of your throat burn mustard. So good. <clears throat> there are tinned lentils. Yeah, you can get tinned or, or like boxed lentils. Yeah. I have tons of dried lentils and beans, so I've been trying to use those. I tried horseradish sauce for the first time. I love horseradish. Did you like it? Any of those sorts of things where it's like, it's hot, but in a like, blows out your senses, your, your sinuses kind of way, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, like wasabi. Wasabi, English mustard, um, horseradish yeah anything like that where you eat a little bit and like all of this burns love it <laughs> oh it came in a hello fresh meal so i tried a bit because i was scared but it's good i'm glad Do you like Branston pickle? Um, yes. Branston pickle is not a thing at, or like anything like it really in America. Um, so that was a new sort of like pickled. It's like a, it's like a very different type of relish, right? Um, yeah. Uh, Branston pickle and, and cheddar sandwich. Very good. As long as it's not too much Branston, because you can, you can, the ratios can be wrong on that. <laughs> Anywho, I think that's it for me today, guys. Um, we have Sunforge tonight, like I said, if you wanna, if you wanna come and watch that short stream on, on the weekends. Um, but we'll be back tomorrow. We can do some more Oily Timmy if y'all would like. If you want to continue with um, uh, Lies of P. Uh, or we can swap to a new thing. So. <clears throat> Slick Tim. Slick Timmy. Yeah, I'm super down to keep playing Lies of P. Um, Barricato said a special Valentine to every cutie patootie in here. As the season changes, I personally know that depresso can act up. Take care of yourself, wear your favorite sweater, drink your favorite hot cuppa. You're loved forever and always. What a sweet message. Um, let's look at the activity feed really fast. Exakel, thank you for the 65 months. Toasted Nom for the 40. Wick Surf, welcome to the cat gang. Again, thank you very much for subscribing. Barry Cato for the three years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much for the support. Ine, thank you for the 26. TFK for the gifted sub. Von Monocle for the 87. Digital Bowtie for the 22. Vet for the 21. Jazz Jackrabbit for the 87. Deacon for the gifted subs. Dragon Sparks for the 87. Sapphire Scale for the 22. Airy Wolf, welcome to the Cat Gang. Again, thank you very much. I am Spellbound for the 34. Zephyrus one for the 87. Crazy Murr for the 75. Black Dragon for the 68. SP Wolf Tech for the 75. And Xander for the 52. Thank you so much. Looks like we didn't have a raid leader. So Snow White running away. Go! Go! So like, <laughs> I'll find someone. Sorry. I'll find someone really quick. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Do you guys want to watch um, Osiris land? Asteroid sample return. 
Summer streaming? We could do summer as well. Summer was even here earlier. Sure. Raid summer salt. There you go. NASA is also live if you want to watch that, what we were talking about earlier. Um, but summer is lovely. Go say hi, spread love, spread joy. Uh, I'll see you guys for Sunforged, or I'll see you tomorrow with Oily Timmy. <laughs> see you guys around. Bye.